Hello there and welcome back to The Closet Historian and back to my sewing room for yet another pattern drafting demonstration. And I know we just did a bunch of these last week in this video where I talked about how to do gathered styles using dart manipulation and flat pattern drafting. And today I have yet another gathered looking style to share with you, although this one has been created with more than just dart fullness. This style here, this is two variations on a very similar style, one with the kind of raised crew, slightly cowled neck, and one with a v-neck. Uh, but there's very subtle variations going on here, but in general this design looks like something you could create using the techniques we learned last week. And you can, but there's additional fullness going on here, and quite a bit more of additional fullness going on here. So I thought it would be a good design to cover in addition all on its own. So let's go ahead and jump on over to the blue patterning table of doom and get started. And as usual, I again begin with my bodice, basic bodice block here. And I have a mirrored version of that, so it's mirrored along the center front here so I can have a full front, because of course this design is asymmetric. Now I need to draw in the curved line that is, you know, the main design feature of this bodice, where the gathering will then radiate from, and it's kind of like a princess seam, sort of. I mean, it's a style line that crosses through the apex on one side, um, but I'm just going running back over to the computer to be like, where do they want this curve? And I'll draw my v-neck in here first so I can get a good idea of where I want this to be. So I'll bring this down. It's about two or three inches above apex level here, and I came up, I think, a little bit more I think to match this design perfectly, I would need to lower this neckline a little bit further. But I'm always cautious with my necklines because I never wear very low necked things personally. But I want to draw a curved line from the arm side on one side through the point of the v-neck and into the apex of the opposite side. So this asymmetric curve that comes across the bodice here and hits the apex on this other side. And this will result in a three piece bodice front. So I'll have a left, a right, and then like a separate shoulder as well. So I'll have two pieces on the left and one piece on the right here when I'm done. Now those two designs I showed you from the 1940s, one has the gathering at the waist on this piece and the other has the gathering in the side for this piece. I'm going to put mine into the side today just because I thought that was a prettier option. Um, just my own personal opinion. You could put it in the waist, you could put it anywhere you want. In fact, you could, instead of using this as gathering as this design tends to, you could keep this as a dart um, for a little bit of a sleeker look if you wanted to. But again, I will put all this fullness from this side of the pattern into the side, close the waist dart into the side. The side dart is already there. So now we have all this to become gathering on that side of the pattern. It will need to fit into the back, which is going to be eight and five eighths of an inch, which is what my side seam measurement is without the dart fullness. Now on this side, we have these two darts and where are we gonna put them? How are we gonna use these two darts to create all of that gathering in this finished design? Well, I'll tell you what, we're not gonna use these two darts to do that. Let me cut along my princess seam here, for lack of a better term, style line that goes across the front of this. And as soon as I did this, I realized, oh, I need to move this dart over before I do this. So let's go ahead and do that. Because this curved line comes out further, closer to the side seam than my dart does. So I'm gonna move my dart over an inch before I do this. So move my dart over here. So I'll cut up that new dart leg and then cut up one of the old ones and then cut away this dart because it's gonna get in my way, goodbye. And I'll move that dart to where I want my princess seam to actually begin at the waist here. So close that off, cut off this little bit of excess that was left doing that, and that's what you get for designing on the fly. All right, so now my dart has been moved over, and you can see already we do not need that dart. This is just going to be a style line, bloop, like so, um, just like most princess seams. Again, check out my princess seam video for an explanation of what's going on here. So now we have two pieces, and we need to add seam allowance along this style line that we just created, because of course I'm going to need to sew them back together. And again, this isn't exactly a princess seam, um, it's just a style line, but to help us understand what's going on, I think it's useful to call it that. But I'll add on my half inch of seam allowance here along this curved line, where again, we will need to sew the other pieces back onto this main bodice piece later. As you are all watching this, I am just getting back from London and I'm probably jet lagged out of my mind. So hopefully I will recover and be back to you soon. And now I've added seam allowance onto the other side of this as well. And I can go ahead and cut my V-neck apart. So let's go ahead and do that. So we have our three pieces for this design and we can see what needs to happen. So now this little shoulder piece on this side, uh, how are we gonna get dart fullness to create the gathering there? That's right, we're not. But I do need to know what this measures right now before I flare it at all. So I'm gonna go ahead and measure this line here so I can know what this needs to be to fit down to this side of the neckline, which is gonna be eight inches. That's what this is gonna start as. And this line here is going to be 14 and a half inches because again, both of these edges are gonna get flared, but we need to know what they need to be gathered back down into. Well, at least we have this dart over here, right? We can use that for dart fullness. No, because what, watch what happens when we close that dart. Uh, it's just completely absorbed into the princess seam again. That's right. 
So we still, that dartfulness again disappears into the seam line and we don't have it to work with. So we've used our dartfulness to create gathering on the left hand side of this, but really we just have a giant dart being lost in the princess seam of this. So how are we gonna create all that gathering for this other side of the bodice? Well, we're gonna do that just with additional fullness. So none of this gathering on these two pieces is fit related. It's all there for style reasons. I'm gonna draw three lines up into the shoulder seam along this area here where we need gathering. Wherever we want the gathering, we're gonna open up a big triangle into it. Again, this is not fit fullness, this is styling fullness. So we have already used up our darts. We, you know, we were out of dart fullness to work with. So any of the fullness we want to add now for style reasons, we have to, we just have to use flare and these wedges of fullness that are not there for fit, but are just there for fashion. And I'll go ahead and just round this edge off. And now we have completely flared this piece. This shoulder seam now is a little bit curved. That'll be fine. We'll just clip our curves when we're sewing this later. This will get gathered down like so to fit back in here to create the gathering on this side of the bodice or this side of the neckline, really, honestly. And maybe, you know, make sure to mark your center front here. You're gonna need that as a notch or an indication later to know where to sew this piece. Now, on this side, same general idea. That's right, I know. And the fullness that they have going on here does seem to radiate from everywhere. So I'm gonna draw two lines up into the shoulder, one into the arm side, and two into the side here. There we go. And again, I'm just gonna add wedges of fullness, large triangles here from where we want the from where we want the gathers to radiate from to where we want the gathering to be. So once again, I'm cutting from the wide edge to the narrow edge of where my added fullness needs to be. And my seam allowance wants to run away, so I'm taping it down. But then I can go ahead and flare this. Now I flared the other side about an extra inch per slash, and you can put in as many slashes or as few as you want. Um, I like to distribute them, so you know, never have them be more than maybe two inches apart. Um, but I'm going to add in at least an inch, inch and a quarter between each of those. I'm not even measuring. I'm eyeballing it, as I always tend to do. But if you want to be precise, go ahead and bring that ruler out. I mean, mine's sitting right here, but that's still too far for me to go. As we know, I'm often looking at my clapper while using my hands as my clapper over on the ironing board, so it's no surprise. But same for up here. At the arm side, I'm going to add in about an inch and a quarter, like so. And up here into the shoulder seam, the same. So this is all just kind of radiating out from that central asymmetric line. Um, th the gathering isn't focused only coming from the shoulder or only coming from the side. It's radiating that entire area of the bodice. So I wanted to put lines in each section of the bodice if we consider the bodice to have sections. As usual, I hope you understand what I mean. But I will cut away my excess here. Again, now my side seam and my shoulder seam are a little bit curved on this. Again, that's no trouble. You can sew a curved line into a straight line anytime. In fact, we do it all the time when we're doing princess seams. So now I have my style line through here. I'm gonna mark my apex on this so I know that this side needs to be gathered from the apex down to the waist, and then the rest of this needs to be gathered from the apex up to the point of the V-neck line. And I'll tape down my floops here. Make sure everything is not gonna fall apart on me. And we have all relevant things marked, apexes, necklines, amount of gathering to be done, etc. So this will fit down into here, like so. This will fit down to the other side, like so and we'll have the other side gathered to fit the left-hand side of the bodice. Again, one of these designs has this uh, side gathering put into the waistline, but either way, you can put it as gathering, as darts, wherever you want it. You can even have all this gathering that's at the side. You could put that into the center front on this piece and have gathering on either side of this line if you wanted to. But because this is an asymmetric style, I only need to cut out uh, one of each of these pieces as opposed to cutting it out on a folded uh, bit of fabric because I only need one of each piece. One left, one right, and one random left shoulder thingy. Shoulder yoke-ish, kind of. But I'll mark my center front on this, and I'll mark where I need to gather on this left-hand piece. So from here to here, I need to gather this down, and I need to gather this edge down to fit into here, like so. And we have a curve, a convex, to a convex over here. So gathering stitching all along this curve, and gathering stitching along this side, and gathering stitching along this yoke edge. Let's take all these over to the machine, put in those gathering stitches. Again, largest stitch size on my machine. And again, you can gather by hand if you want to. I just prefer to do it by machine, especially on this machine. It uh, creates very nice stitches to do gathering with, so no problem here. And if you notice, my hands are all scratched up. Blame Oliver, my cat, because he likes to do that game where you move your hand underneath the blanket and then he will attack it. However, he is very fierce. So um, I, and I end up with scratches and little nips from that on my hands which are dry to begin with because Colorado. But when have my hands and or manicure ever looked nice on this channel? 
Never, that's correct. Although I have started using press-on fancy nails in the lookbooks and reveals sometimes, so I have a fake manicure for like, you know, a couple of hours that is just pressed on with stickers. And I can't do anything with long nails, but they sure do look nice. But I'll go ahead and gather down my side seam for that left-hand side and sew it to the side seam of the back piece over here. So I'm just fitting that down into the back, spacing out my gathers, making sure everything fits down nicely and isn't too clumped up in one area or another. I'll just wrap my gathering threads around this pin to hold them in place for now, like so. Give that a little bit of steam so nothing gets too excited while I'm over on the machine. So that one's out of the way. Let's go ahead and put my yoke on here as well while I'm here. So again, I have my gathering stitching along that curved edge that goes from arm side to the point of my v-neckline. Again, I will tie off the gathering threads on one side of this and pull the others down. And this just needs to fit from where I give myself a neckline indication on my larger piece of fabric here, and then up to the arm side. So fitting this down. My threads are being annoying. Rude. And I again will space out those gathers so that they're not clumped up in any one area and just size this down to where it needs to be, matching my center front line here, and spacing those gathers out, and pinning this into place. And I'll sew these two sections first, and then I'll do, of course, that large curved line last. While I'm over here, I'm just going to go ahead and pin my shoulder seam on this side while I'm here and get that done with as well. Back over here on the ironing board, I'm going to go ahead and press all my side, side seam allowance on this side towards the back um, instead of pressing it open like I'm about to do here on the shoulder. You can see I clipped that because it was a little bit curved. Um, and then all of this I'm going to press downwards towards the main body of this. You can put your extra seam allowance anywhere you want. You can press it open if you want to. It depends on if you're lining the garment. It depends on how bulky your fabric is, which exactly what exactly you want to do with that um, seam allowance fullness. But for this muslin, I'm just gonna press it towards the back. Now for the other side of our style line, other side of our bodice here, of course, all this needs to gather down to fit in. And I didn't mark my apex on here, so I'm just gonna put a pin there so I know where I need to be. And then I'll mark the apex on this piece as well, like so, because the apex needs to line up with the apex, like so. And then I can gather from the apex to the waist and distribute my gathers accordingly along this line and then do the same from the apex to the neckline, basically. Just again, a way to distribute the gathering so that it's not too bulked up in one particular area, and it's distributed evenly along this curved style line. And I have been using these new glass-headed pins. They're supposed to be Japanese pins. I think the brand is called like Little House or something like that. I grabbed them actually on Amazon. I picked up some other ones from Etsy, but I have not really enjoying those. They're too thick, I think. I'm so used to working with fine pins, but those Dritz pins are just not sharp out of the box anymore. And when you buy a new box of pins, you expect them to be sharp. So at least these ones are sharp. They're a little bit shorter, a little bit thicker than the Dritz pins I like, but these have been working for me so far. I'm going to see what I can find at the haberdashery places in London, see what I can investigate in person. But I will go ahead and link these ones below if you are also interested in giving some new pins a try. Not Spawn, of course seeing as I can't even remember what the brand name of these pens is exactly. <sighs> no sponsors on this channel. It's all funded by viewers like you, so thank you. And I will go ahead and stitch this long edge of gathering down as well over here on the machine. It's usually uh, recommended to have the larger side of your fabric facing the feed dogs, so like the gathering side facing the feed dogs, but I pinned it like this and meh, <laughs> it's fine. I'm not too particular about that kind of thing. back over here on the ironing board. Again, I'm going to iron that seam allowance towards the smooth side, I guess is what I've been doing there. And we have all this gathering in here. And of course, this side will now need to be sewn to a back as well. So that again, I can try this on for you and show you what this style looks like. It's actually quite cute. I wouldn't mind using this style in the future. It would make a lovely lightweight wool crepe or a rayon dress. Not that I need another rayon 40s dress, but to find need, you know, I'm about to be in the capital of wool. So we'll see how I do. And here is this mock-up on my body. Again, this gathering that I have here in the side, like the brown dress example, um, the brown and black dress at the top here, they have their gathering in the side seam, and then the other dress on the bottom, this black one, you can't really see in this image, but they have the gathering for that below the bust at the waistline. For the hundredth time, you can put your gathering anywhere you want. But this is my style line here, goes up through the apex over to the other arm side, 
but all the gathering on the outside of this semicircle is all additional fullness and not fit fullness. So I just wanted to go over this particular design for that reason. I hope you enjoyed seeing how this slightly more complex or at least visually confusing design comes together. Doing this is kind of a continuation of how I analyze styles when going through the catalogs and magazines here on the channel. I have an ability to look at a design and really analyze how it's been done, but it's not uh, a step-by-step -step process in my brain anymore. I just kind of look and think, oh, and I can like think through it without thinking through it, if that makes sense. And it's just from years and years of pattern drafting and looking at pattern drafting books and things like that. So uh, without having to see the pattern pieces, I can imagine how it would have to go together. And that is something I would love to teach other people to be able to do, to be able to look through a 1940s pattern magazine, fall in love with the dress and see exactly what you would have to do to your bodice block to get there. Um, that's how I function. And I would like to get other people into my zone, if you know what I mean. But I will be back from London soon to share my highlights from that city with you and to get working on some more sewing projects and full sewing projects to share with you as well here soon. I needed a break from the sewing room, but I'm sure I'm itching to get back. And thank you as always for watching today. I'll be back with more sewing, vintage fashion, costuming, and crafting real soon. So I'll see you then. Bye.